Hello everyone, welcome to Ikeda platform and this is Ravin Jangit here, your electrical faculty and in this video I am going to talk about the operation without overlapping. So let's start. If you talk about the overlapping, that actually defines in the operation only the two walls are conducting at the same time, but they are, they should conduct and after the, their conduction, the next two thyristors will operate. But during this transition, they should not overlap. Okay. Due to this overlapping, the some phenomena uh, phenomena will happen. Okay. Average voltage will also decrease. So that we will uh, discuss in the further slides or further lectures. Now we are concentrating only the overlapping when the overlapping is zero. So I can say that overlapping is actually represented by mu. So whenever mu is written, that is actually denoting overlapping. So here overlapping is uh, written as zero. So if I draw the SIM, basic six pulse bridge converter, which I have already discussed. So six pulse bridge converter. Then it will have the six switches and these six switches are connected like this. Okay, so and these are connected or subdivided in uh, these three legs like this. And this will go for the point P. We have already discussed about that. But for the understanding of the further slide, we need to, this is the necessary here. So this is a point P and this is a point N. And these are the three terminal or you can say the three phase supply. So it will have the three ends A, B and C. So this is A, B and C. And it will directly go to up to here. This will bypass and connect it to the second leg. This will bypass, again bypassed and this is connected to the third leg. What was the what are the namings of these switches are strictly are defined as S1 it will be the S2 okay so the upper commutation so upper portion is called the upper commutation and lower portion is called the lower commutation so and the upper portion are numbered as odd number so S1 S3 and S5 so that is actually easy to understand now lower portion is kind of even numbered so that will start remember the s1 and diagonally it will be convert connect it will be numbered as s2 then start from here s4 and here it will be the s6 okay that is actually easy to understand now now we will talk about if there is a connection of load then what will be the supply how they are connected at an instant of time, at only one time, if we talk about at any instant of time, I can write here one second. At any instant of time, only two thyristor walls will operate. Only two thyristors wall will operate okay so two thyristor walls so obviously one will operate from the upper commutation one will operate operate from upper commutation portion and second will operate from lower commutation process. It means if we are talking about at a time only two thyristors. Let us suppose the uh, there is a conduction from A to B. There is a conduction from A to B. Then there may be a chances of that the supply will go from S1, then from P to N if there is a load then then uh, ab we have talked about then it will go to up to this 
and come out of the pin. Similarly, if you talk about the switches S1 and S2, then they will operate like this. Okay, if you talk about the switches S3 and S4, then they will be operated like this. The supply will come from the B, go to the switch S3, and then from P to N, if there is a load connected, and then that will, uh, we have talked about the S4, so we will go for the S4, and this will come out of A. So in this way, they are actually connected, and accordingly, they are numbered. So that we have to understand. So one by one, we are going to talk about these uh, phenomena. So at instant of time, what will and what uh, which type of thyristor will operate. Okay. So one thing, remember, there is no actually there is no overlapping. And uh, that's why we are considering the voltage assumption. We have taken the sum of the assumption that voltage is same. Okay. Uh, and the pure sinusoidal wave we are applying. So like this. So now we are moving for the next slide. So there is some interesting points for you. So if we talk about at the instant of any at any instant of time, then these are these may be a chances. So if we are starting with the switches at two and three, if we are start if we are starting the switches two and three, this is two. One second, this is two, and this is the switch three. Similarly, if we talk about this, then switch three and four. And after that, they are operating 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 1 and 1, 2. Okay. Now this, if there is omega t is equal to alpha, there is alpha 60 degree. So what is alpha? We have already discussed. This is actually called the firing, firing angle. And what is the use of this firing angle? If we talk about the firing angle, this is actually for the delay. Or you can, th you can say that this is the delay angle. So this is so for... If we want to, if we no, don't want to start, if we don't want to start at instant t equal to 0, omega t equal to 0, and we want to start at uh, 15 degree after the 15 degree, and these are actually the advantages in the thyristor walls. The operation is controllable. That's why these are called the controlled switch due to the firing angle. And this is actually due to the gating terminal. Okay, so now we are starting with this uh, one. The first is consisting the switch two and three. So if we are consisting, if we are taking the switch two, uh, two and three, this is two and this is three. So they will operate. The supply will go from the B and this will return to two and come out of the C. Like this, they are going. They are going to be operated. So this, this, these are the some uh, points written. Now we are going to discuss the first point is saying that let SC S3 is turned. Okay, this is the turned on. Okay. This is the turned on at omega t equal to alpha. It means we have fired. Okay, the firing has been done. So we can write the firing is started or firing has been done. Now the now this thyristor can be started and that thyristor is S3 thyristor. Okay. Now as S3 is turned on. Okay. We have started the S3 uh, switch S3. Then at the time or at that time, we will obviously say that the S1. Okay. The switch S1 which, uh, which is already operated. I can say which is already operated. Now it is turned on. Now at that time, omega t equal to alpha when the S3 is turned on. So S1 will be uh, will be going to be uh, turned off that we have to remember. Now we will uh, talk about so I can say the S3 when the S3 is turned on. So obviously we will say the S1 is turned off that we have to remember. Now we will talk about the third point. If you talk about the third point, it is saying that DC bus voltage during each terminal is listed here. What if you talk about the interval, if you talk about the first interval, Okay, so this is go, this is given the first interval, second interval, this is the third interval. Okay, and the intervals are named as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And these are like this. So, if you talk about the wall's conduction, which, the, which type of the which um, wall will operate. So, I have already told you, one will operate from the upper commutation pro, uh, comm commutation and second will operate from the lower commutation portion so i can write here so i can write here this is called and this is called 
एज अपर कमोटेशन अपर कमोटेशन पोर्शन एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड लोअर कॉम्यूटेशन पोर्शन ओके सो वन विल ऑपरेट फ्रॉम द अपर कॉम्यूटेशन पोर्शन एंड सेकेंड विल ऑपरेट द फ्रॉम द लोअर कॉम्यूटेशन पोर्शन अपर कॉम्यूटेशन पोर्शन इज लिस्टेड और नंबर्ड एज एस वन एस थ्री एंड एस फाइव लोअर कॉम्यूटेशन पोर्शन इज नंबर्ड एज एस फोर एस सिक्स एंड एस टू नाउ now if you talk about the walls conduction for the first interval the wall number 2 and 3 operate wall number 2 this is the wall number 2 this is the wall number 2 and 3 will operate similarly if you talk about this so 3 and 4 so same 4 and 5 then 5 and 6 then 6 and 1 then 1 and 2 according to their operation they are actually numbered so as we can also have numbered them 1 2 3 4 5 6 but that is uh, actually difficult to remember so that is actually easy if we are numbering the upper portion as 1 3 and 5 lower 4 6 and 2 so this way so if we talk about the 2 and 3 if 2 and 3 are operating so along with that the voltage vpn okay phase to neutral phase to neutral <clears throat> then one second not phase to neutral then from the p uh, terminal p to n that will operate if you talk about the s3 this is the s3 and this will operate from s2 so if switches s3 and s2 are operating then it means the supply is from b and will be terminated at c if s1 and s2 are op operating then the supply is coming from a and it will be terminated from 2 this way all are operated okay now so this uh, these are the voltages according to that so let us say there is a eba voltage so it will be numbered as root 2 ell sin omega t that is ell is actually <clears throat> ell is actually line to line voltage line to voltage okay so sin omega t and this is a root 2 for uh, this is the peak value it is uh, actually written here so if we talk about the eba okay from uh, you can say uh, the line to line voltages and but here we are taking the maximum voltage that's we uh, that's why we have multiplied with the root 2 now this point is also completed now we will move for the uh, next point the voltage across s3 is negative only when the voltage is across the s3 it is it means the wall voltage it may be across any uh, we we can talk about across any of the wall so if we are talking of the s3 wall it may be negative it may be positive it may be negative or it may be positive depending on the omega t if omega t is less than 0 so obviously it is going to be negative why because it is the function of sign why because it is a function of time if omega t is less than 0 it is it means sign negative and sign minus theta is minus sign theta it means eb is eba or you can say the voltage across s3 is going to be negative now the voltage across uh, s3 is positive if the omega t is greater than 0 obviously it is given so the function is of sign if the sign is positive sign uh, sign positive theta is so obviously will be the positive sin theta if sin negative theta it will be negative sin theta that we have to remember now these are the uh, this uh, these are actually the dc voltages according to the switches are operated so root 2 ell sin omega t plus 60 if we are operating 3 and 4 then root 2 ell sin ell it means the line to line voltage sin omega t if we are operating 4 and 5 then root 2 <coughs> ell sin omega t minus 60 and this way all are given so this is the interval number 1 interval number 2 likewise all intervals are mentioned in this diagram if we are operating in the interval number 1 then we can uh, operate or conducting walls are actually the wall number or switch number 2 and the switch number 3 okay one from the upper portion and one from the lower portion that we have to remember so uh, according to the uh, second 3 and 4 4 and 5 5 and 6 6 and 1 and 1 and 2 will operate so if we talk about 
if we talk about the conducting walls 2 and 3 or you can say the interval number 1 then the voltage across wall 1 voltage across wall 1 it will be eab it will be eab okay like this okay 3 and 2 so it will be eab like this so this is uh, eab again eac okay and uh, these are mentioned according to that and the variation will be applied so according to that the diagram is uh, waveform is given and we will also see this waveform in the next lecture where i will explain the average dc voltage okay now so if you talk about the dc voltage waveform so that dc voltage waveform waveform is actually six pulsations per cycle that i have already mentioned many times so six pulsations of ac cycle now so pulse number r grace base is equal to six now we can say that the pulse number in the grace base is actually six and that i have already mentioned in uh, the previous lecture if i talk about the average dc voltage what i am saying average dc voltage then it can be increased and it can be decreased and that is actually depending on that firing angle that is actually depending on that firing angle if that firing angle is increasing from 0 to 90 degree so that point is if firing angle is increasing from 0 to 90 degree then your alpha will increase and according to that average dc voltage will be reducing average dc voltage will be reducing why it is reducing as the alpha increasing as the alpha is increasing it means pulsation will increase pulsations will increase and causing the reduction of average dc voltage okay now if we talk about the average dc voltage if we talk about the average dc voltage so that will increase if the alpha decreases from 90 to alpha decreases and alpha will only decrease from 90 to 180 degree okay so if it is decreasing from 90 to 180 degree from where from 90 to 180 degree then alpha will decrease and as the alpha decreasing as the alpha is decreasing then i can say this is the pulsations are pulsations are reduced now and if the pulsations are reduced it means the average dc voltage is going to be uh, increase average dc voltage so i can say i can write that average dc voltage is actually depending on the value of alpha if the alpha is increasing if the alpha is increasing from 0 to 90 degree then pulsation will increase and according to that it will reduce if average uh, if we talk about the alpha decreasing and that will only decrease if the 92 it is operating from 90 to 180 degree and then average dc voltage will increase and that you can see here if you are operating from 0 to 90 degree then the, these pulsations are increasing enormously if these pulsations are increasing enormously then average voltage is going to be decreased if you're talking about from 90 to 180 degree then these pulsations are actually going to decrease and when these pulsations are going to be decreased it means the average dc voltage is going to be increased now likewise so what are the assumption we can take the first the apply voltage the first is applied voltage whatever the voltage we are applying at the source side that should be balanced and that can only be balanced uh, it should be timely it should be 120 degree apart okay a b and c voltages or you can say the phasor wise they they should be operated in the 120 degree apart that should be sinusoidal and that should be perfectly sinusoidal okay and the third is e -A e -L -L. that means line to line voltage line to line voltages should be maintained constant should be constant or maintained constant so these are the basic assumptions are taken for the simplification purposes so that that we can uh, simplify our calculation simplify our basic formula okay so if we talk about the basic assumptions so what are the assumptions first is apply voltage should be balanced it should be perfectly sinusoidal and ell that is the line to line voltage that should be constant so the dc voltage what the dc voltage repeats itself for each interval 
it means for each interval of time it will repeat and the average dc voltage can be found for taking the average vpn so as per these assumptions as per these assumption we can directly say that dc voltage can be taken as the average of vpn all the voltages eab ebc and eca so average of that if we are taking that is actually the dc voltage so these are the basic points which are uh, relate uh, related with this topic so i hope you have understood so thank you